What's up, everybody? Matt Kajeski here, back again with the Osmo channel, talking some college football prize picks. Before we get started, make sure to hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell so you know when this and all other content goes live. Our friends over at Prize Picks have a ton of contests going on, player prop based, and we are going to be discussing college football, the week seven main slate of games on Saturday. And without further ado, four up, four down, let's get into this. We are going to start at the quarterback position where we have a matchup that is exceedingly difficult, but a prop that is still far, far too low. We are going to talk about Will Levis, Kentucky quarterback, going up against Georgia. This is a spot, obviously, that has been exceedingly difficult for teams to go in and play Georgia this entire year. Kentucky is a different animal. This offense is very different than last year. This price still reflects the former offense, but we have Liam Cohn coming in as offensive coordinator. He formerly coached with the Rams in the pros. And Kentucky, they've been a slow offense. They've been really run heavy, but they're an undefeated team and a team that has enjoyed the luxury of positive game script throughout the season. Against Georgia, this does not project to be the case. It is a 21 and a half point spread in favor of Georgia. This should increase Kentucky's pace and pass rate heavily. From here, Will Levis has been efficient to start the year. And we look at Georgia. They're a team that has shown cracks recently against the pass. They're battling a lot of injuries. They recently just allowed Bo Nix to eclipse 200 passing yards here. So seeing Will Levis come in at 139 and a half, if he just meets normal passing volume in this game, even without efficiency, Will Levis should exceed this mark. And we're not talking about a big number, just 139 and a half. So we will take over on Will Levis, 139 and a half passing yards. From here, we're going to go to some rushing. There's a couple interesting situations to take advantage of for the rushing props. The first one we're going to talk about is Max Johnson, LSU quarterback going against Florida. Now, this is a spot that you might be wondering, why are we taking a quarterback with one and a half rushing yards? Well, Max Johnson was actually recruited as a dual threat, and he's a player that hasn't needed to use that skill set much this year. When we look at his rushing volume, they did play McNeese Stadium, zero yards in that game. And then he has two games with negative rushing totals against Mississippi State and Kentucky. Games they trailed, games they were playing from behind. However, through his career, he does have 116 positive rushing yards. Last year, he only had one negative game and eclipsed the 1.5 mark in five of six starts. So just based on pure probabilities, the chances that he ends up with negative rushing yards or even less than one rushing yards, very, very low on this particular slate. So looking at Max Johnson... We'll hit the over, not to mention LSU is a fairly decent pass blocking unit. I know Florida State does rush the passer, but just probabilities would indicate that this is a spot where we can look over. And from here, we're going to go to Ramir Johnson of Nebraska taking on Minnesota. This is a spot where, again, we're seeing a lot of per perception that Minnesota plays strong run defense. Now, Minnesota, they're only allowing 77 rushing yards this year, but there's a lot that goes into this. Opponent has definitely worked in Minnesota's favor. They recently faced Purdue, the past heaviest team in the Big Ten West. They have games against Bowling Green, Miami of Ohio, and Colorado, three extremely inefficient running teams. And then they have Ohio State, a team that did have success on the ground against Minnesota before they abandoned it when they got down early in that game. Now, Minnesota, they're a team that was bottom three in yards allowed per attempt last year on the ground, and they're a team that returned largely the same personnel. So it's a spot where we can potentially buy low on a hyper-efficient Nebraska rushing offense. And Ramir Johnson has emerged as the lead back for this team. Gabe Irving is out for the season. Marquis Stepp and Sevian Morrison, they have taken a step back due to inefficiency and hit the bench. And Jaquez Yant is a player that is only seeing a part-time role in the offense. Ramir Johnson has at least, and at least 17 carries in two of the last three games. It's a spot where we can look to his volume being pretty secure against a far, far overrated Minnesota run defense. In our final prop, we're going to go to the receiving game and take a look at somebody else who is underpriced in Jack Betch. He's the number one receiver slash tight end for LSU right now. This LSU team just lost Boutte, their number one and alpha receiver. Deion Smith is not expected to play here either. He widely functions as their number two. That leaves Jack Betch as the number one. Betch is averaging... 7.3 targets per game in LSU's last four contests. That's three games at or above seven targets. And then the last two, he has target counts of nine and 10. 
Florida has played solid defense overall. And it's a spot where we're just banking on pure volume for Fetch getting there. Again, no Boutte, no Deion Smith. He's the clear number one receiver, pass catcher, whatever you want to call him in this offense this year. And he has been fairly efficient. He's only averaging 45 yards per game. That's right where you see his prop. However, we're expecting a strong uptick in volume following the injuries. We'll hit the over on Jack Betch's receiving prop. But that will do it for us today and our friends at Prize Picks. Thank you guys all for watching. Let me know in the comment section what your favorite pick on Prize Picks is this weekend. I am Matt Gajeski on Twitter at Matt underscore Gajeski. For everyone with the Osmo team, we will catch you again next time.